Are you fully showing up as yourself? And not saying that I wasn't in these past episodes, but today... Hello, I'm Kyla Bursi and welcome back to High Kyliver. It is the fourth day in the new year for me, but whatever moment you're in in your life, I hope that you are well. I hope that you have had a beautiful start to your day or that your day has gone beautifully. But today, in this moment, I invite you to feel real still. Feel with me through this episode. Let's be real, show up as our authentic selves and let's be present. Let's take in this moment, let the words absorb and touch you in whichever way they reach you. So this is a podcast, a reminder to you if you're new here, I am on a mission to realize my potential while protecting my mental. This was created to go throughout my last six months of college. I now have at least five months left. I graduate on May 11th, and this is my last day home in Nashville for winter break. I'm in my makeshift studio for the last time, so this episode is very special for me. I'm very grateful for my family coming together to make this happen. All the support that I've gotten through the start of this podcast up until now. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I want to say thank you. I hope I've given you something so far to sit with. I'm just here to motivate you and also share with you. Be my authentic self. Last episode, we talked about mirrors all around, how our conception of ourselves sets the tone for experiences that we have in this world. And I also gave you some tips to how to improve your self-image and some affirmations to take throughout this year, take throughout life. Life, if you will, not just a little challenge. Let's do them and reprogram our subconscious thoughts to have a positive self image, to ground ourselves in love, peace, and joy, to say, I have a positive self image. I deserve to feel, I deserve to show up as my authentic self, fully as myself. I deserve to act in the present. I deserve to do it now. So those are some things that I gave to you to take with you on. In this episode, I want to talk about some things. Let's let's talk about my appearance for a second. I don't have my Afro. I have chosen to do a protective style as I prepare to go back to school. Shout out to my cousin, Kisa. Her business is the key experience. She's a hairstylist here in Nashville. So I'll give her a shout out if you're local. She's great. I believe her Instagram is at the key experience. Thank you, Kisa. But this is what my authentic self looks like Today, for the first three episodes, I hit the ground running. I told you when I got back home, I did my, showed up every episode, my best twist out, did a little coverage of the dark circles of the bumps, but I look like this 90 to 95% of the time, unless I'm trying to be cute. And that's fine. I want to present myself as my best because this isn't called high caliber for nothing, a play on the words high caliber. So to be my best, realizing my potential, but it's also to be my authentic self, to love myself as I am. Now gets into the title of this episode and the topic. We want to be all that we are, and that starts with knowing ourselves. Can we accept ourselves as we are? Can you accept yourself as you are? And that goes back to the self-image. Be honest with yourself. Are you fully showing up as yourself and not saying that I wasn't in these past episodes, but today I didn't feel like putting any makeup on and I paid good money for this hairstyle. So this is how I show I'm showing up today. Before we go further, I'd like to also continue to reflect on this moment in gratitude and also to say, I am so proud of myself for actually executing a plan, a vision, and that's also tied into the inspiration part of things. Every episode that I've put out so far, I ended strong with high belief in myself that I was going to get that website up. It wasn't up yet. And hopefully by the time this episode goes up, highkyliver.com is live. So I'd love for you to check it out. I'm uploading my t-shirts that I'm selling not only to 
give you all something nice to wear, but also it'll help me run my podcast for these next few episodes. So the price isn't reflective of how much they cost me to make, but it's also a contribution to this journey that I'm on. So starting this podcast has been very encouraging to me to actually go for it, to execute a plan that didn't seem so possible. It's, it felt real, but it didn't feel real until I started to see the equipment come in, the help, see how many people actually believed in me and also started to listen. And I know that that started with me committing to myself, telling you, telling Kyla, you can do this. And it always starts with believing yourself. So that's what I push you to do? Can you accept yourself as you are? And if you can, whatever you have presented in front of you, that opportunity wouldn't be there if you weren't ready for it. So I'd say go for it this year. Also, let's talk about my plan for this semester. This is my last semester in college. I've decided not to go to grad school. I've decided to fully focus on my podcast and doing well in my classes as I prepare for graduation, but I'm going to luxuriate in this moment. I know it's not always a luxury or a privilege. I think that's the word I was looking for, a privilege for some students to not have to work, but for me, my parents made a a deal, and I'm grateful for their sacrifices over the years, but they told my sister and I back in high school, you don't have to work. You have the rest of your lives to get a job. And so I didn't necessarily take heed to that fully when it came to, well, yes, yes, I did. I've never had a real job besides tutoring or research school oriented jobs around my major. But so, okay, those were jobs. I got paid for them, but not in the way where I went external to campus and applied somewhere. But still, I've taken advantage of that in regards to not limit myself time to get involved. But now that looks like, okay, this is real. I will not have a summer break again in the way that school has provided. This will be my last spring break, my last a lot of things. I just want to enjoy this moment. I'm going to have four day weekends. I've earned those. I'm making an intentional choice to make time for self-care. This weekend, I'm going back early, moving in my own apartment, living by myself for the first time also, so I can fully make this podcast happen in a, in a safe space for me and also set my give myself a little cushion post-graduation. So a little bit of planning, but a little bit of taking steps into adulthood in these next few months and giving you all updates along the way which I really love to start vlogging on YouTube. Maybe you can see what a weekend in my life looks like and I can interact with you all in those ways. But this moment is about really feeling real still for me. Feel, reflect on these past four years, continue to figure out who I am, learn myself in all facets, especially when I get out to the real world because I know it can be rough. So I want to be fully, if not holy, because I know over time. I want to grow more wiser, continue to learn and grow. But as I prepare to step in adulthood, I want to do that reflection and say, how has Kyla grown over these past four years? And let's trust. Let's trust, not think. Let's trust and know that we are ready for whatever is to come next. So my weekends may look like If I'm not editing or recording, I might just want to relax, do some self-care, and I encourage you to do the same. So let's get into As I Am. What does that mean? I have another book. I am a, a reader, a collector of knowledge at times, things that can give me wisdom to think for myself. So this book I like to share is How to Think, Thich Nhat Hanh. I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly, but he is pronounced himself as a Zen master. And this book presents meditations on how to love. And I was flipping through as I was preparing for this episode, and I came to a page called The Practice of Metta. I'm going to read it to you. Um, I, yeah, I'll read it to you in its entirety. And then we can break it down and go further as I expound on that and give you something to meditate on for yourself. So The Practice of Metta. To love is, first of all, 
to accept ourselves as we actually are. The first practice of love is to know oneself. The Pali word metta means loving kindness. When we practice metta meditation, we see the conditions that have caused us to be the way we are. This makes it easy for us to accept ourselves, including our suffering and our happiness. When we practice metta meditation, we touch our deepest aspirations, but the willingness and aspiration to love is not yet love. We have to look deeply with all our being in order to understand the object of our meditation. I'm going to pause there to talk a little bit. The object of our meditation being ourselves to love someone else is to fully love and accept who we are. So before you can show up as you are and want other people to start perceiving you as what you think you perceive yourself as, if you, especially if you haven't done the work to see if your inner self-image aligns with how you want others to perceive you, you have to first ask you, can you accept yourself as you are? I ask myself, Kyla, can we accept ourselves as I am? am. And I reflect on the experience that I went through where it came to, I, I think I've mentioned hair and hairstyles, but it's, it's relevant to me because that's my culture. Hair, hair, Afrocentric, Afro look, but I haven't always been that way. For the longest, I'd always wear extensions, whether it was box braids, sew-ins. I always felt obligated to get my hair done that my natural hair was not okay, that I could not accept myself, in my opinion, as I was naturally brought into this world. As my hair grows out, I thought that it was supposed to go down. So I did everything to hide that. And I did that introspection to say, wait a second, why am I doing this? Continually getting my hair done. Am I doing this because I have to? or because I want to? I, the question, both of those were kind of the same answer, but the must that was there was feeling like I could not, I refused to go out in public with my hair like this perhaps, or with my Afro, because I didn't think that that was beautiful. And it's okay if your aesthetic is extensions like this is a I've gotten box braids but this I want to try something new but it represents a protective style and I know a lot of women like to switch it up and try different looks without damaging their natural hair and that's beautiful but for me it came towards an obligation I felt like I couldn't accept myself as I was so in high school when I went to private school and I had that moment to kind of come to terms and actually sit with myself for once I went for it I did a big chop, went into school. It was very uncomfortable because I didn't know how to style my hair. I didn't know how to take care of it. So to get to love myself as I am, what that looks like for me was being comfortable in my skin. Also in my appearance today, I didn't want to feel like I had to cover up my bumps, cover up my blemishes because this is how I am. I don't want to hide that because this is real. I'm not trying to put out an overly processed image that's not actually me, but this is what being as I am looks like. Accepting yourself as you are goes beyond appearance. It can go into other facets of your life. Are you showing up as your authentic self at work, at school, with yourself? You know, are you, when you are presenting this one front of yourself in public, when you get alone, are you still conflicting with these two selves that you've created? Let's pick back up on finishing the practice of Metta from Thich Nhat Hanh's How to Love. I'm going to continue reading here. The practice of love meditation is not auto-suggestion. We have to look deeply at our body feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness. We can observe how much peace, happiness, and lightness we already have. We can notice whether we are anxious about accidents or misfortunes and how much anger, irritation, fear, anxiety, or worry are still in us. As we become aware of the feelings in us, our self-understanding will deepen. 
We will see how our fears and lack of peace contribute to our unhappiness, and we will see the value of loving ourselves and cultivating a heart of compassion. Love will enter our thoughts, words, and actions. Continuing on, wrapping up this excerpt, we have to look deeply at more facets than our parents, our body, feelings, perceptions. That's why allowing yourself the space to feel, notice the anxiety, ask yourself, where is that coming from? The anger, the irritation. So then once we have that self-understanding, he says, we will see how our fears and lack of peace contribute to our unhappiness. So that also relates to self-image from last episode, how you perceive yourself or lack of knowing yourself can lead to unhappiness or conflicting experiences in the real world when you expect one thing and another happens because it actually starts at the root of who you are. So once we find the loving ourselves and cultivate that love of human sensitivity or a heart, he says, of compassion, Love will enter our thoughts, words, and actions. So that really starts with accepting yourself as you are. And I also would like to connect this to once you're able to stand in yourself, you also have to be wary of when you go into sets and people try to change who you are. This world, this life is so much faster, so much grander than some opportunities that may be presented to us. And that goes back to the trust and recognizing whose reality are you living by. In my TED talk, I said, I am a world changer and a boundary breaker. I want to build Kyla Bursi, high Kyla as unique in itself. And I encourage you to do the same. So that is all I have for you today with as I am, accept yourself as you are. And once you have that grounding in yourself, you can then see, are these people around me accepting or opportunities wherever you are accepting me as I am? If not, why do I feel like I have to change for them? Or why do I feel like they don't accept me? There are a lot of pathways to explore there. And you have a a beautiful year in front of you to do some self-discovery. So that's all I have for you today. I am going back to school tomorrow. I hope to give you all an update in the next episode, especially as I figure out how to run this podcast, be a full-time student. I guess full-time studio on my part-time schedule, but um, do something new. And I encourage you to go for it this year. Go for it all. You've been listening to Hi Kyla Bird. My name is Kyla Bursi. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. I love to continue interacting with you. HiKylaBird.com should be up right now. I trust you, Kyla, <laughs> to get it up. I only have one more thing to finalize on there, but it's been a process. I've been grace- pacing and gracing, as I mentioned in the last episode, pacing myself through this process and giving myself grace when I need it. So highkylaber.com, check it out. And also please interact with me on my socials at highkylaber. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.